If you've got between 1,000 and 1,500 pounds to spend on a new road bike this year, then this is the video for you. We've picked six really good road bikes that we'd be happy to recommend at this price. And these are bikes we've actually ridden so can properly vouch for them. Yes, this video could be much longer if we wanted, as there are so many options out there. But then it wouldn't be six of the best now, would it? There are so many options that we've had to pick just half a dozen that we've ridden and reviewed recently. Now you can expect a really good bike with a decent frame and nice equipment at this price. And it's possible to get a carbon bike, as these examples show. Most of the bikes on this list are well below the upper limit of the price brand, which means you'll be able to spend the savings on other kit like shoes, helmets, or maybe even a cycle computer. Or you could just keep it in the bank. Anyways, that's enough waffle, so let's dive in. Okay, so we'll start with one of the most recent bikes tested here at Road TC, the very impressive Izalco Race Carbon from German bike brand Focus. Now Focus might not be the most high profile or glitzy bike brand, but they know how to design a great bike. And this one is case in point, it punches well above its weight, confirming that if a designer knows what they're up to, then you can get an absolute blinder on any budget. Handling, ride quality, and above all, fun. This bike has got it in spades. It feels buzzy like a dog in the back of a car waiting for the doors to be opened so it can get out and have a good sniff at the surroundings. The Izalco race wants to be ridden hard and I can think of few better entry level carbon fibre bikes if you have racing ambitions either now or in the future. It's stiff and responsive. The geometry is racy but it's also a good cruiser too. You can head out there for three or four hours and cover some decent distance without ever feeling beaten up. For such a stiff bike, it's never uncomfortable, even with the 25mm tyres pumped up to 100 psi. And it'd make for a great sportive machine, or one of those spirited group rides on a Sunday morning. And on top of that, you get a pretty decent spec of Shimano Sora. The shifters look and feel identical to the more expensive group sets. Although, this is just a 9-speed, rather than 10 or 11, but in reality, it works just fine. So don't judge a bike by its group set, as this Focus Izalco offers a frame and fork that is a cut above the rest at this price. Upgrade the bits that are important to you over time and the bike will literally get lighter, quicker and more responsive. We really liked the Borman Rotec Carbon. So much in fact that we awarded it the prestigious accolade of Best Road Bike of 2017. High praise indeed, even if we do say so ourselves. The Road Team Carbon continues the theme of fun and exhilarating bikes delivered by Boardman, that also somehow managed to offer excellent value for money. You can't argue with the performance or kit from this entry level racer. And the frame is so good, it'll be well worth upgrading the parts as and when you can in the future. That frame and fork are made of carbon, not a common material at this £1,000 price point. Usually, bikes in this price range use the cheaper aluminium frame material paired with a carbon fibre fork. If you really want a carbon bike at this price, this is one of the very best options. The handling is quick, but never feels twitchy. So should your tyres break traction slightly, front or rear, it's really easy to keep under control. It's very reassuring, especially if you aren't the most confident of bike handlers and find yourself in a bit of trouble. This bike obviously comes in well below our £1,500 budget, but we're all about saving you money here at Road TC. And that means you can spend the saving on other kit like new clothing perhaps, or maybe a cycle computer. Boardman has shown that a good carbon frame can be delivered at this price. And though obvious cost savings have been made for wheels, brakes, and that saddle, they are all things you can tweak and upgrade for minimal outlay. So all in, it's a pretty decent spec bike with a very good frame set at its heart. Right at the thick end of this price range is the Giant Defy Advance 3. An excellent choice if you have your heart set on a bike that can provide a really comfortable ride for those long, hazy summer sportives you're dreaming of riding. 
Now, before you all come at me in the comments about there being a 2018 model, I know, but the 2018 bike has a different paint job. And that change aside, the bikes are pretty much the same. That includes the smooth all carbon fiber frame and fork with through axles for the disc brakes and a more relaxed geometry than you'll find on the conventional race bike. There's plenty of comfort on offer thanks to the D-shaped seat post, a profile that allows it to flex, as well as the super skinny seat stays. Also helping on that comfort front are the 25mm tyres, but there's space to go wider, much wider if you want, it'll take 30mm tyres too. That's ideal if you have lots of poorly surfaced roads to contend with. And what's more, there's even the option to fit mudguards if you want to be able to do the daily commute as well. So the Giant Defy Advance 3 isn't a lightweight gazelle of a bike, but it handles superbly and it's highly comfortable. This bike is at its best when getting in the big miles on less than perfect roads. And with the ability to take mud guards and wider tyres, it'll happily do that all year round. So there's no need for a specific winter bike if you choose this one. Combining a light and responsive carbon frame with disc brakes, the Ribble Grand Fondo disc is a fast, comfortable and affordable option for tapping out the miles. It's a very easy bike to live with, thanks in part to its long wheelbase and a reasonably slack head tube angle. You won't get any twitchiness at the front end, which makes it an excellent bike if you're new to road bikes or if covering large distances and you don't want any surprises once fatigue levels can start to affect those concentration levels. The high speed handling doesn't have the sharpness of a steeper, more compact race bike, but the neutral steering feel you get from the Grand Fondo is perfectly suited to the style of riding it's aimed at. The frame shows a decent level of stiffness around the bottom bracket area, so if you do run out of gears and find the need to stand up, at least you know the bike won't be flexing around beneath you. This Grand Fondo is very good at what it's designed to do, with sorted geometry, well specced components, and a frame set that feels a decent quality, and a ride that matches that. So it may not be as racy in the bends as the Endurance, but there's very little in it. So if you spend a lot of your time taking in long distance rides and sportives, the Ribble is pretty much made for the job. Okay, so you don't want to spend all of your £1,500 budget on a road bike, because maybe you need to budget in a new helmet or shoes. Then how about this full carbon fibre Dolan for just a whisk under a grand? The Dolan Letap 105 is a full carbon fibre road bike, with Shimano 105 group set, it offers excellent road manners and sporty handling. If you really crave a carbon fibre bike, but don't want to spend a fortune, this is one of the best affordable carbon bikes you're likely to find anywhere. No, it may not be cutting edge carbon fibre frame, but they're all the modern details you'd expect much higher up on the sliding scale of price. Cables are fully internally routed, producing clean lines, and there was no rattling to detect from the cables inside the frame. Contributing to the sharp and responsive ride is the tapered head tube with a large one and a half inch lower bearing. The fork isn't full carbon fiber, as the steering tube is aluminium, but the only real negative is in the increased weight. But I know what you're asking, is the ride any good? The short answer is, yeah. It's sprightly and energetic, with a really good turn of pace when you apply the power. Steering is well balanced, with enough stability to make descending at speed a joyous experience. It's comfortable too, it adequately irons out all but the roughest of roads. Though not the lightest bike in the world, it's not going to massively hold you back on the climbs, and the compact ratio chain set helps when the gradient kicks up. So all things considered, the Dolan offers top level performance at an entry level price. And really, what's not to like about that? Our final option is from British bike brand White, and it comes in the fine looking Suffolk, which is a really good all rounder. It's ideal for everything from sportives to commuting, with mudguards as standard to keep the rain at bay, and a really nice ride to boot. Taking cues from White's cyclocross range, the RD7 frame set offers loads of clearance, 
plenty of stability and a neutral riding style to cope with whatever is under your wheels. But that geometry is given more of a traditional road tweak to further enhance its ability on the asphalt. And it's a lovely bike to ride. Easy too thanks to the neutral steering that ensures it's ideal for newer riders as it never needs taming, even on the roughest of roads and the greasiest of surfaces. But don't go thinking that it'll be boring if you're a more advanced rider and like that bit of excitement. You can push the white hard into the bends and it'll hold on line neatly with loads of feedback about what the front and rear wheels are up to. The longer wheelbase, or at least compared with a normal road racer, gives a stable ride, even when off-road, gravel tow pass, that kind of thing. Considering its stiffness levels though, it is still a very comfortable bike, with a decent level of shock absorbance, helped out by the large volume tyres and the sensibly padded own brand saddle. For your money, you're getting a decent spec. For all round, all weather commuting and general riding, disc brakes are becoming a real must have, especially if you're on the roads mixing it with a lot of traffic. You want to know that you're going to be able to stop effectively and efficiently in the wet or the dry, and disc brakes do that for you. So overall, the Suffolk is a brilliant bike. Great design delivering totally on its brief. It's about getting you out there, whatever the conditions, or to try out that road you've never been down before. And if the tarmac disappears, well, who really cares? The Suffolk will just take it in its stride. So there you are, six options, all under our £1,500 budget, including some really nice carbon options. If you like this video, then give us a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to get more videos like this from Road TC. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.